Hey, it's time for math class. Welcome to Manufacturing Math, Lesson 1, Part 5, in which we partake of a slice of pie. So, we're trying to cut in a circular arc around using a radial arm on a machine that's constrained to only square movements. We can only move our shop machine, our imaginary shop machine, along the X or the Y axis, right? We can move left to right, or we can move forward or back. And for our reference point, our recollection, remember our shop machines are constrained X and Y, X and Y, X and Y, X and Y only, and of course Z. So how do we get an arc out of machines that can only move in square motions. Well, since we're using a drill, it seems like the smart thing to do would be to simply drill the holes in a circular pattern. Right? Duh. Yes, of course it is. But that's exactly what we want to do. The trick is two-part. It's knowing how many holes to drill, and it's knowing where to drill them. So let's start by figuring out how many holes we'll need to drill for our three-inch diameter circle. Well, how would we know? Well, the number of holes we drill is determined by two things. It's determined by the size of each hole, and it's determined by how many holes we need per circle. So for now, let's make an assumption that we'll be working with a 1 8 inch drill bit. That's just arbitrary. We're just assuming that going in. So each drill point is 1 8 of an inch, so 8 consecutive drill points will give us one in, a one inch cut or a one inch hole. So how many points will we need for a three inch diameter hole? Three times eight? Not quite. Three times eight would give us eight holes per inch or a total of 24 holes, which, which would let us, if we wanted to, cut right across the circle, in effect cutting it in half. It would give us Eight holes per inch for three inches would cut us across the diameter, but that's not what we want. We need eight holes per inch around the outside of the circle. So, how far is it around the outside, and how would we know? Well, we could count. One, two, three, four, five. Man, talk about tedious. At that rate, we'd spend all day counting, and we'd never get any work done. So, is there an easier way? Hmm. Well, believe it or not, there is a relationship between the size of our old friend, the radial arm, and the distance it travels around the outside of a circle. The relationship is always the same, no matter the size of the circle. The relationship between the size of the radial arm and the distance it travels to make an arc around the circle remains constant no matter how big or how small the circle may be. It's the same for the biggest circle in the world or the smallest circle in the world. We're saying the relationship is the same even though the numbers might change. The radial arm, or the radius, always travels precisely a distance equal to the circle's diameter times something called pi. 3.14159265358978 etc 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 Yeah exactly no kidding no matter how big the circle or how small the relationship is exactly the same the diameter of the circle times pi gives us the distance around the outside now you got to wonder don't you who figures these things out and I don't know that anybody knows for sure, but I suspect it was probably ancient wheelmakers, some of the first people to have to work with fabrication in a circle. You figure, for the ancient chariots, they had to knock out hundreds of wheels, and probably without any decent specs. So if you were a wheelmaker back in the ancient world, you'd have to start all over again with each circle until somebody probably said, you know what, this is crazy. There must be an easier way start realizing that all these circles have relationships to each other. So, of course, they went to the mathematicians, and the mathematicians took all the credit. But I think 
you can bet the idea probably came from a fabricator. Anyway, the distance around a circle is known as its circumference. Circumference. The circles, the distance around the circle is known as its circumference. And the circumference is the diameter times the calculation pi. And usually when we're working with pi, we round it either round it to 3.14 or, of course, you just figure it on a computer. Figure it with a calculator, figure it with a, with a spreadsheet. You just figure it automatically. But for our project, to cut a 3-inch diameter hole around the sweeping arc with our radial arm, the radial arm travels 3, the diameter, times 3.14 pi, or 9.42 inches. That's the actual travel distance around the outside or the circumference of the circle. Now, we said, remember, there are eight holes per inch because we're working with a 1 8 inch drill bit. So we'll need just over 75 holes, or 75.36 to be precise, at 9.42 inch circumference times eight holes per inch. Okay. Does the calculation make sense to you? Are you tracking with where we're going here, figuring the diameter, using this arbitrary measurement called pi, and then using the eighth inch drill bit and multiplying out the circumference to give you the number, the total number of holes that you're going to need to drill in order to create this three, three inch diameter circle? If not, it's worth reviewing. It's all very straightforward. It's going to make great sense to you once you've seen it a time or two. Um, but it's worth looking at and keeping track of. Fulfill your review sheets and figure, figure a few of these um, because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to tell our machine, our drill press, exactly where to drill. And that gets to be a lot of fun. You're doing great if you get the idea of circumference, if you get the idea of pi, if it makes sense to you that we drill X number of holes per square inch based on the size of the bit. You're tracking along beautifully with what we're doing so far. You're moving along very, very quickly into a great understanding of manufacturing math. So congratulations to you. Stick with us. We look forward to seeing you in the next video in this series. Thanks.